I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we work is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. The area also encompasses traditional territories of the Huron-Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, Erie, Neutral, Anishinaabe, Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation, Chippewas of Georgina First Nation, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations. I'm joined today by Julie de Bruzen, Parliamentary Secretary to the Ministers of Natural Resources and Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Um, the, uh, just some housekeeping, the, uh, the audience's cameras and microphones will be off and muted for the entire event. Although there will be a media availability following our remarks. So to ask a question, you go to the drop down list in the chat box located on the right side of your screen and you choose the name of the moderator. I'll let you know who the moderator is. Um, uh, was that you going? I think it'll be uh, Tanya. So yes, you will um, look for Tanya in the, the drop down, type your name and outlet and Tanya will call on you to ask your questions directly to the speakers. The Atmospheric Fund, or TAF as we're known, is a regional climate agency that invests in low carbon solutions for the greater Toronto and Hamilton area and helps scale them up for broad adoption and implementation. TAF does basically three key things. We invest our endowments to generate financial and mandate related impact. We use some of the investment proceeds to provide grants to innovative low carbon community initiatives. And we demonstrate de-risk and help accelerate the pace and scale of key urban carbon reduction opportunities. And we do this in collaboration with private companies, with public agencies and nonprofit organizations. TAF is very fond of saying we follow the carbon. And what the data and study after study confirms is that electrifying our cars, trucks and transit is a key pathway to a net zero carbon future. Nearly 15 years ago or so, when a few EVs were starting to come off the assembly lines, TAF launched a program to be, build EV familiarity and uptake. And our first focus was on municipal fleets. So the, these folks are professional buyers and drivers. And so that included installing what now seems like very low tech data loggers to understand the use patterns, um, developing procurement approaches for these kind of newfangled uh, vehicles and some fun opportunities to test drive the few models that there were. Fast forward to today, and despite dozens of models now available, federal and some provincial purchase incentives and, our, and the life cycle costs becoming parity or better with internal combustion engines, barriers still exist to making your next vehicle an EV. One of these barriers is access to charging. The reality is that 46% of Ontario residents don't live in single family homes and those that do, not all of them have a driveway or a garage to charge in. So solving this charging pinch point is key to achieving the single largest urban carbon reduction opportunity. And that's why I am delighted today to announce the launch of TAF's EV station fund our new $2 million funding program made possible by Natural Resources Canada. Support from the EV station fund is available to municipalities and municipal agencies, for instance, parking authorities like our friends at Toronto's Green Pea, utilities, public institutions, nonprofit organizations, faith groups, and multifamily building owners like apartments and condos. All of these folks are able to install on street, off street and underground EV charging stations. These are the toughest nuts to crack when it comes to accessing places to charge and TAF likes the challenge. And we want to ensure that everyone can join the charging network and has fair access to EV adoption. EV station fund recipients will receive contributions of up to 50% of the cost of purchasing and installing their EV charging stations up to a maximum of 100,000. TAF is also offering additional funding for technical advice in the planning and installation of projects. It can be complicated. With Enercan's investment, uh, we plan to install up to 294 chargers across the greater Toronto Hamilton area. You can find out more about TAF CV's station fund and apply for support at ev.com 
taf.ca, ev.taf.ca. You are also invited to join a webinar with our EV Station Fund Manager on February 10th to learn more and details are also on the website. I would like to thank Natural Resources Canada for this opportunity to demonstrate how public and private and nonprofit organizations can collaborate on climate action. And on that note, I'll introduce our next speaker, Parliamentary Secretary Terry Dabruzen. Please go ahead. Thank you, Julia. And today we're literally Julia and Julia, as I mentioned. It's a, <laughs> kind of fun. You were talking about tough nuts to crack. And um, I guess we're, we're talking about putting together the pieces today to make EVs more accessible. And it's something that certainly comes up in my community where uh, a lot of people don't have a garage or or their own driveway. So these public stations are so central and important. I'm really glad to be able to be here on behalf of Minister Wilkinson to participate in this announcement. La science nous dit que si nous voulons avoir un monde habitable pour nos enfants et nos petits-enfants, nous devons réduire les émissions dans chaque secteur à travers le pays. Et les véhicules que nous conduisons en sont une grande partie. En fait, le secteur des transports est responsable d'environ un quart de tous les gaz à effet de serre que les Canadiens et les Canadiennes émettent dans l'atmosphère chaque année. By reducing pollution in transportation, we can dramatically reduce those emissions, protect the environment, improve the quality of our air, and build a prosperous net zero economy by 2050. Today, we take another important step towards those goals by making it easier for people in the Greater Toronto and Hamilton area to drive electric. But I'm pleased to announce that we are joining with the Atmospheric Fund to help finance up to 294 EV chargers in these cities. The charges will be located in the places Canadians live, work, and play, including in multi-unit residential buildings, on the street, and at workplaces. And you'll be operating by December 31st, 2023. And as I mentioned, these are the central places that are the challenge for people who don't have their own garages or driveways and how we can really make sure that there's greater accessibility for zero emission vehicles. Now, all of this is made possible by a federal contribution of $2 million from the Zero Emission Vehicle Infrastructure Program. And today's announcement is part of a broader goal to help industry and consumers make the transition to cleaner driving and change the way that we power the vehicles that move us around our communities and across the country. To achieve that, we're pursuing a combination of investments and regulations, including a setting a new mandatory target that all new light duty vehicles sold in Canada by 2035 will be zero emitting. That's five years sooner than our original goal of 2040, and consultations are already underway on how to best reach that target. Since 2015, Canada has invested over $1 billion to make EVs more affordable and charging infrastructure more accessible. This includes offering rebates of up to $5,000 for zero emission vehicles, and an immediate 100% write down for businesses purchasing those vehicles as well as expanding the national network of charging stations for electric vehicles, which with the result is that you can now drive from St. John's, Newfoundland to Victoria, British Columbia in an electric car. Over 100,000 individual Canadians and businesses have already purchased or leased a zero emissions vehicle, cutting up to 352,000 tonnes of greenhouse gas emissions per year. But just imagine what we can achieve when millions of Canadians choose to drive zero emissions cars and light trucks. That's a future we see. That's a future we are building together as individuals, businesses, and governments. A future where the vehicles we drive don't harm the environment we cherish. So I want to congratulate the Atmospheric Fund for the leadership and vision that you bring to this project. And I'm really looking forward to seeing all of your success with this project. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Debruzen. Um, and uh, it's great to hear not only about the EV charging, um, but the wrap of measures from policies to uh, purchase incentives, et cetera. Um, that's what's really going to make a difference uh, across the country and for the emissions uh, profile that we need to achieve. Now, I'd like to open it up for media questions. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Tanya will be your moderator and please uh, indicate your questions in the chat. The floor is yours, Tanya. Thank you, Julia. If uh, media have questions at this point, you can go ahead and let me know in the chat or raise your hands and ask questions that way.
And we have Philippe Mathieu from Le Voyageur who has a question. Philippe, please go ahead. Yes, hello, good afternoon. Um, I, uh, um, the Le Voyageur uh, covers uh, Northern Ontario and, you know, um, I was just wondering at all if uh, we could expect um, any measures to be put forward in the future um, to, um, you know, help out to some communities like we're doing for Toronto and Hamilton uh, for, for the North. Is that at all uh, in the discussions being taken place? Thank you, Julia. I'm assuming yeah, that's ahead. more for me than for this project. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, thank you for that question. And and as I mentioned, you know, we, we now have charging stations that do allow people to travel all the way from one coast to the other, from St. John's to Victoria, which is starting place, but no doubt expanding uh, expanding our ability and our, our charging stations right across the country is a priority. So it's it's part of what we're looking at and and what we're working on is to to build that network to make it more accessible. I I will just add that um, the Atmospheric Fund has a thirty year history of working um, in the local community to advance low carbon solutions and we have. Um, as part of our work, as I mentioned, um, a very strong granting program. So we have a lot of experience already in running programs where we receive applications, we can evaluate them uh, technically and professionally, and then administer those grants. And, and that was the, we're, it's called a third party program, which NRCAN made available. Um, and I, uh, so I don't know whether you have, um, uh, another funding call for that, but uh, that's one of the things that um, networks can help. Like if there's a nonprofit organization in your region who has the capacity to apply for and administer this kind of program, then we'd be happy to connect uh, with them and, uh, and share our experience with, uh, with this kind of application and program. Thank you. Philip, did you have a follow-up? Um, uh, nope, that's everything for me. Thank you. Thank you. If uh, any other media have questions, please let us know. At this time, we don't have anyone queued. Give it another few seconds. Oh, we have Perry Lefko. Perry, if you could let us know uh, what media outlet you're from and go ahead with your question. Perry. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, you can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned about charging and how much that's a, a barrier to, you know, for people wanting to buy EVs or accessibility EVs. But in Ontario, where this project is aimed at, where the funding is aimed at, one of the biggest inhibitors, and maybe even the biggest one, is price, and specifically the Ontario government not providing any, uh, you know, grants or uh, ease or ways for people to uh, make the price not as uh, strong. Can you comment on on what Ontario needs to do, or can the federal government do anything to get Ontario on board with, you know, what other provinces are doing? Um, can you indicate your media outlet? Canadian Auto Dealer. Okay, great. Thanks. And thank you. Well, let's start by pointing out because I, I always want to take the opportunity to remind people that there is a federal rebate program and that uh, you can find all the details of that online as well so that you can see what, what vehicles are available for the federal rebate. Just sometimes I worry that in the conversation about provincial rebates, we, we lose we lose that piece and I think it's an important tool for people to be able to use and certainly many Canadians um, and Ontarians specifically have been able to use that rebate program. So, uh, you know, going forward, we, we are continuing to work uh, on, on all sides of this. Uh, making sure there's greater accessibility means EV chargers like what we're talking about today. It means rebate programs like the one the federal government has put in place 
but it means a whole whole wrap around to make sure that that this is the option and ultimately by by 2035 100 percent of the vehicles sold in our country will be zero emissions well can um, i do a follow-up on that please Every, you know, the, the federal government is great. That program really works. But, you know, if you go back a couple of years, as soon as Ontario, the government decided not to uh, continue with the rebates, the sales of EV, EVs went down dramatically. And I like, again, I'm trying to say is, I think the federal government is doing a great job. Some provinces are really on board with EVs, but it doesn't seem Ontario is truly up to speed or philosophically agrees with what's going on. So I'll ask the question again, can the federal government do anything more to encourage Ontario to climb aboard this, uh, you know, this idea about the importance of EVs and certainly all the money that's being put into charging stations? Um, my hope is that with projects like this that make it more accessible and easy for people to, to actually access uh, EV chargers, it will build the demand and interest as well among Ontarians, and and that is where we'll be able to continue seeing support for these types of programs and and to push for for whatever programs that they think is appropriate. But but federally, we're doing our part to make sure that we do have that infrastructure piece and that we do have the rebates in place, and that's. That's where we we lead by showing how it works and how it does help to support Canadians who want to make these choices and who ultimately we need to make these choices because this is this is where it will be moving forward across the world. Thank you. Are there other questions at this time from media? It looks like that's it for today. So I will turn it back over to Julia to close out the event. Wonderful. Thank you, Tanya. And thank you again, Parliamentary Secretary de Bruzen, for your remarks and for the Government of Canada's support for the EV Station Fund program. And thanks to everybody who tuned in today for today's